Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, let's analyze Tesla's Q2 earnings report. Let's not waste time. I found a tweet by AdForwardCap that summarizes Tesla's Q2 earnings pretty well and I will use it as reference. First, let me explain a few terms. Gross margin is revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by revenue. Cost of goods sold is also known as the cost of doing business. In Q1 2022, Tesla had 30% gross profit margin, which means that there is 30 cent gross profit for a dollar of their sales. In Q1 2022, Tesla had 30% gross profit margin, which means that there is 30 cent gross profit for one dollar sales of their Tesla cars. This excludes EV credit. In Q1 2022, this gross profit margin fell from 30% to 26.2%. Now, this is largely due to startup costs in Austin and Berlin, and partly from lower Shanghai mix. Both the Austin and Berlin factories will take time to ramp, and this cost will continue to weigh on margins for the remainder of the year. In the long term, these facilities will have much higher margins than Fremont factory, but they won't look good on the balance sheet for now. As I've mentioned before, manufacturing is a fixed cost business. Your factory space is fixed, your labor is fixed, your machine is fixed. Your only variable cost is your raw material. The more units you churn out, the more profitable you are. Because every single extra unit of product you produce is going to add on to revenue without costing much in expense. And this is what I mean by Tesla cars are fixed cost business. In manufacturing, the two most important things that you have to do is to control the time cost of producing a single unit of product. The second is to control the cost of producing a single unit of product. So as of now, the two new factories just started operation and it will take time to fully ramp up to produce cars. Hence, they won't look very profitable. So if you guys are wondering how long it will take for Austin and Berlin to fully ramp up, one way I look at it is through how fast the Giga Shanghai took to ramp up. So about a month ago in June, we received news that Berlin have produced 1,000 cars a week. And if we divide 1,000 cars by 7 days, it is 142.85 cars per day of production capacity. If we were to take a look at how fast Shanghai ramp, on the second month, Shanghai actually produced 134 cars. Now this is not too far away. So if we were to assume the same speed of ramping up, there is 6 months left to the end of the year, they probably produce 400 cars a day, they are about 92 days per quarter, and if we were to take 400 cars multiplied by 92 days, we will get about 36,800 cars in each Berlin and Austin. So this is how I estimate. So now, let's talk about some positive points that came out of Tesla Q2 earnings report. So number one, operating leverage. Number two, ASP, also known as average selling price. Number three, 4680 self-production. Number four, financial year guidance. So let's talk about number one, operating leverage. OPEX has fallen 9.6% of revenue because of low incremental costs as production scales. This is before layoff takes place, which aims to cut 10% of salary workforce. Now, OPEX is operating expense, but what constitutes operating expenses? Now, these are considered operating expense. Your SGA, your COGS, your management costs, and your additional OPEX. Capacity growth continues to outpace CAPEX which only grew 15% year-on-year despite building out two new factories and doubling capacity. This is because of significant declines in body shop space needed per unit due to new manufacturing efficiencies. Now, CapEx is net change in property, plant and equipment. In this case, the two new gigafactories minus the depreciation expense. So here he speaks about Tesla's operating leverage. With incremental units produced, Tesla will become more profitable than before. The profit margin will widen as Tesla improves their manufacturing efficiency and have economy of scale. Number two, ASP, also known as average selling price. Tesla have a brand mode. They can dictate and control their price because the demand exceeds the supply. Now this is a good thing for investor. We can see from Q1 2021, average selling price is $47,800 and the trend has been upwards to $55,700. So every car sold costs about $55,700. The formula for getting average selling price is gross auto revenue divided by cars delivered in that particular quarter. Number 3. The 4680 RAM still has a long way to go, but good to hear that production in Austin is expected to begin soon and production in Cato Road has increased 35% month over month each month since March. This will dramatically decrease production costs once scaled late next year. Number 4. Financial Year Guidance The management is still targeting 50% year-on-year unit growth despite headwinds in Q2 or 1.4 million units for financial year 2022. They expect to exit Q4 producing 40k units per week, which implies more than 2 million run rate. 
they are well positioned for unit growth in excess of 50% in 2023. Tesla has also sold 75% of Bitcoin, but this has no effect on free cash flow. In summary, this was one of Tesla's toughest quarter in their history with many unique challenges. Challenges such as Shanghai factory shutdown, cost of raw materials increasing significantly, Bitcoin crash, supply chain problems, macro problems. The results aren't perfect, but the company's ability to navigate these issues is truly incredible, but not surprising given their history of strong execution. That sums up Q2 Tesla 2022. If you guys have any questions, just comment down below, I'll answer them. If not, thank you for your time. Help me out by liking this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next week.